Muhammed'in kaymlarının ve kahve ehli van nervahi için Allah rızası için el Fatiha. Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim İnnallâhe ve melâiketehu yüsellûn alen nebi Ya eyvellezîn âminu sallu aleyhi ve sellimu teslimâ Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala ali seyyidina Muhammed Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayya ala salam Hayya ala salam Hayya ala falam Hayya ala falam Allahu Ekber Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain Nehmanullahi Teala ve nesafiru neşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah Ve neşhedü enna seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi Ve ashabihi ve tabihi hulafe-i rajdin min mahdin Min ba'du ve zihammeti ala tahkik Hususen min huallemeti hulafe-i resulü ala tahkik Umar el-Mu'minin Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar, Usman ve Ali ve Allah Bakr, Sahabe, Tabi'in Ridvanullah Teala aleyhim ecma'in Ya yuhal mu'minul hazirun Ittakullah Teala ve tarih İnnema allazina takwa allazina hum muhsinun All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created and honored the children of Adam all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created mankind in ahsani taqwim, the most perfect form, and then sent him to asfala safilin, the lowest of the low. All praises are due to him who sent his most beloved Sayyidina Muhammad as a mercy to all the worlds. And may all peace and blessings be upon the Holy Prophet والسلام, for whose sake Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. All peace and blessings be upon the light of guidance, the Imam of the messengers, the master of the first and the last. And may all peace and blessings be upon his blessed family and his noble companions. O oh, believers, welcome on this day of Jummah which is a gift to the nation of Muhammad Welcome to those who are coming to the Juma prayer with the intention to sit and to learn and to take something that they can apply to their lives and make themselves to become better servants to the Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O believers, speak the truth. Always speak the truth. Holy Prophet is saying, hold on to the truth because being truthful will lead you to becoming saleh, becoming righteous. And the saleh people, if you are saleh, it will lead you to paradise. A man will keep saying the truth and striving for truth and if he keeps doing for that 
He is written before Allah as very truthful, Siddiq. Beware of lying. Lying leads to sin, and sin leads to the fire. The man will keep lying and striving for falsehood. If he does that, he will be written before Allah as a great liar. O believers, do not be from those who do not deceive others with their tongues. Do not be from those who break promises. Do not be from those who have two faces. Because Holy Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith warning us, whoever is double-faced in this life, he will have two tongues of fire in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being in this group of people. 21st century man, we have lost his sense of honor. 21st century man has lost his sense of faith. In these days, we find that people, they make promises. They say words without understanding that they are being taken to account for every word that comes from their tongues. And in this time, almost all of mankind are fitting into the hadith where Holy Prophet ﷺ described the hypocrites, the munafiks, because he is saying that the hypocrite, the munafiks, it has three signs, which are, whenever he speaks, he tells a lie. Whenever he promises, he always breaks it. And if you trust him, he will prove to be dishonest. The true believer is that one who keeps his promises. Because Holy Prophet said, the promise is the debt of the believer. Meaning that when you make a promise, you have a debt that you have to pay. You have to fulfill that promise. Even if you have to die for that promise, that is the way of those who came before us. And one of the greatest qualities of the believers throughout history, one of the greatest qualities of the believers is wefa, loyalty. Muslims that came before us, they stuck to their words and they die for their word, no matter what. Look to the Sahabi Kiram. Look what they did for the sake of the Holy Prophet. When they took bayat from the Holy Prophet, they fulfilled all the conditions of that bayat. One Sahabi was once asked, What did you pledge to the Holy Prophet when you took bayat with him? And that Sahabi said, we pledge to die for him. Hazrat Musa bin Umair, in the battle of Uhud, he knew that he was going to die. But he charged forward into the battle in order to protect the Holy Prophet. And even though he was one of the richest Sahabi before Islam, when he was martyred, there was not even enough cloth to cover him for his burial. And for his sake, the ayat came down from the heavens to the tongue of the Holy Prophet And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about those ones like Hazrat Musab that there are some people among the believers who kept the promise made to Allah. We have made an oath. We have made a promise. We took bayat with our shaykh. Look to those murids who came before us, how they kept their promise. There was once a sheikh in the time of the Ottoman Empire, and some people started making fitna about him. Going to the Sultan and saying, Ya Sultan, this sheikh has hundreds of thousands of murids. If he wants, he can take over the whole empire. And so the Sultan called that sheikh and said, They are saying this about you. Is this true? And the Shah said, O oh my Sultan, this is not true. I only have one and a half murids. 
The Sultan said, we will see. Tomorrow we will call everyone, tomorrow to the Maidan, to this big field. And they made an announcement, saying that all those who are claiming to be the Shah's Mirids should come to that field. And the next day the field was full, hundreds of thousands of people. And the Sultan said, look, all these people are saying they are your followers. And the Shah said, no, I only have one and a half Mirids. And so the Sultan announced, saying, the Shah has done a crime. And I'm going to give him the death penalty unless ten Murids die for him. One Murid came forward and said, I will die for my Shah. So they took him inside a tent. And inside that tent they had some sheep. So they cut the sheep and the blood started coming out. All the people did not know this. They just saw the blood coming out from the tent and that murid that was brought inside. So all the people became quiet and they became nervous. So the Sultan said, Who is the next person who will give their life for the Shah? Nobody came forward. Only one woman came forward and said, I will die for my Shah. And again, they took her in the tent and blood came out from the tent, from the sheep that was in the tent that they cut. When the big crowd saw the blood coming out, they all ran away and they left the Maidan. So the Shah said to the Sultan, You see, I only have one and a half murids. And the Sultan said, Is the man your one murid and the woman your half murid? The Shah said, No, it is the opposite. The man did not know for sure if he would die. He didn't know what was going to happen to him before he was taken. So he is half murid. But the woman saw death that was in front of her. So she is my full Mirid. We must ask ourselves sincerely, do we have that kind of loyalty? Are we ready to submit ourselves for our Sheikh, like those ones from before who submitted themselves to the Holy Prophet والسلام, to the Awliya Allah? Because the promise that we have made to our Sheikh in reality it is a promise to Allah. Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Holy Quran about bayat? In truth, those who have given bayat to you, they have given bayat to Allah. The hand of Allah is on top of their hands. The whole reason that we are in this life, it is to return to Allah. Having fulfilled the promise that we made to him on the day of promises. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it in the nature of this world that this promise can only be fulfilled through bayat to the shaykhs, through the bayat to the Holy Prophet. If you have given bayat, that bayat it is going to be tested. And if you keep that bayat, if we stay loyal, if we have wafa, then perhaps we can return with honor into the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and be counted amongst those who have kept the promise on the day of Kalubala and they have paid that debt of the promise that they have made. And the ayat of Bayat is continuing, saying, so he who breaks his promise, he has only harmed himself. And he who fulfills that which he has promised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give him a great reward. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to let us to be from those who fulfill our promise to our Shaykh, our promise to our Prophet, our promise to our Lord, so that on the day of judgment, we will be amongst those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Lazim wa lazim la ilaha illa huwa al-hayu al-qayyim wa atibu alayhi. Amen. La ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku wa al-hamdu yuhi wa ta'ala kulishayin qadir. La ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku wa al-hamdu yuhi wa ta'ala kulishayin qadir. La ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku wa al-hamdu yuhi wa ta'ala kulishayin qadir. لا إله إلا أنت سبحان إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحان إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحان إن كنت من الظالمين سبحان كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة وارو سبحان كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة وارو سبحان كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة وارو إن دينا إن الله الإسلام الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر